Hello viewers, this is Oben Horn of Africa. You are watching our weekly program, Invest in Ethiopia, where we discuss investment opportunities and the challenges in Ethiopia. Today, we'll be discussing the uh, role of uh, GADA, uh, special economic zone in economic development of uh, the nation and related issues. To discuss these issues, I joined by uh, Dr. Lema Mossa, Manager of Design, Supervision and the Contract Administration Department at GADA Special Economic Zone. Till the end of our program, stay tuned. Dr. Lemma, thank you for your time and joining us. Thank you. It's a privilege to be your guest today. First, would you introduce yourself? My name is Lemma Mosisa. Education background, PhD in civil engineering. Uh, I have been working uh, as uh, assistant professor for some time abroad. Now I'm back to Ethiopia and uh, I immediately joined Gada Special Economic Zone. Currently, I'm working as manager uh, for uh, design supervision in the Contract Administration Department. Let me come to, to our today's discussion. What is the concept of uh, economic uh, zones and why economic uh, zones established? Special economic zones are uh, uh, geographically delineated areas within a country. Uh, and uh, they enjoy special uh, business uh, enabling preferential policies which are not uh, existing in other parts of the country. The intention behind this is special economic zones should serve as a, a, an economic instrument to attract especially the private sector because uh, all over the world uh, private sector is more efficient compared to the public uh, institutions. The intention is to attract more and more uh, private sectors so that it can serve as a uh, stimulant for the overall economic development in a, a, in a, within a country. What roles does uh, a special economic zone play in boosting the economy of a nation? Special economic zones are established for uh, Two types of objectives. Uh, they are called short-term objectives. Sometimes they are referred to as static objectives. These are uh, to create job opportunities, to attract foreign direct investment, and <clears throat> to uh, enhance uh, foreign exchange earnings through export. And they could also uh, serve as uh, as uh, a stimulant all, uh, for the overall uh, economy of uh, the country. Coming to the uh, long-term objectives, the long-term objective is to induce a structural transformation in uh, a country. Uh, they do this through uh, skill transfer, knowledge transfer, and technology transfer. They improve quality of employment, uh, so ultimately, they have to lead uh, economic diversification and to uh, structural uh, transformation of a country. A special economic zones have uh, become uh, an increasingly a popular instrument uh, to promote economic development uh, these days. Why? As I said earlier, uh, special economic zones are catalysts in economic transformation. They are catalysts. They induce structural transformation of economy. So uh, it's a policy instrument, an economic uh, policy instrument. And this has been the case for many years. And uh, unfortunately, we are just starting in Ethiopia. China has used this for many years, for over 40 years. They, they have uh, brought about an economic miracle. So uh, that is why uh, we are... Uh, initiating this development of special economic zones in uh, Ethiopia, especially in Oromia, because Oromia is going to be the first to establish such uh, uh, special economic zones uh, in Ethiopia. Gada special economic zone was officially uh, launched weeks ago, but it was under construction for some years. What has it achieved so far? Gada special economic zone uh, has been under construction for uh, a few years. Uh, and uh, uh, <clears throat> taking you back to the history, uh, we had 
uh, Gada Special Economic Zone uh, Proclamation uh, 2026 2020 uh, by uh, Romea uh, uh, Regional State Chafe. So since then we started uh, working on it. So far uh, we have been uh, very busy with uh, land acquisition because as you know in Ethiopia land acquisition is a very difficult issue because uh, lands are not privately owned in Ethiopia. They belong to the state and as the uh, nation's nationalities in Ethiopia as well. So acquiring land is uh, slightly difficult. So the good thing in our case is uh, the Chafe proclamation gave us a uh, green light to acquire around 24 hectares of land between Mojo Town and Adama City. So we have been busy uh, to acquire such land. So far we have acquired around uh, 460 hectares of land. And the land compensation is fully paid by the regional uh, uh, state government. So, uh, and it is uh, most of the time why the external uh, investors, especially international investors, complain is land acquisition is a very difficult issue in Ethiopia. Now we address that, fully we addressed. We provided, we got that 24 hectare of land through which a fair proclamation and we are uh, paying the land compensations and we have successfully ac acquired around 460 hectares of land so far. Along the, along the way, we have been constructing uh, infrastructure uh, developments. For example, we have uh, constructed around 5.14 uh, kilometers of uh, integrated asphalt road. That uh, integrates telecom facilities, electricity, water supply, uh, sewerage line, west water sewerage line, and uh, the drainage for surface drainage facilities as well. So this 5.14 uh, kilometer uh, road is nearing completion. The asphalt road is totally completed. Uh, the remaining is some of finishing works are still uh, remaining. Along this, we have also uh, been busy with uh, water supply projects. Uh, we have dug around uh, eight uh, dug wells. Uh, that can serve the, f the, start, the starting f uh, land of uh, 460 hectares uh, and it, is also, uh, it, it will also become sp uh, uh, operational uh, within four to five months. Oromia in particular and Ethiopia in general is endowed with uh, uh, huge uh, agricultural resources. How significant is this uh, special economic zone in uh, accelerating uh, ec uh, agricultural uh, growth of uh, Ethiopia in general and Oromia in particular? Ethiopia is endowed with uh, huge natural resources and uh, most of these natural resources are still untapped. This is one of the uh, comparative advantages. Existence of raw materials, natural resources is one of the comparative advantages you need to establish special economic zones. Normally, uh, when you establish special economic zones, you have to have a very meticulous planning ahead of time. Otherwise, if they go wrong, uh, they go wrong very badly. Because the, the African experience shows uh, it, it, is, uh, it, it, it really requires uh, very uh, good planning ahead of time. Uh, so what we did in, Eurom in Oromia is uh, we did a very uh, planning ahead of time. We had uh, the master plan for 24,000 hectares of land already with the land uses, with the infrastructures, the uh, roads connectivity, water supplies, power stations. That has been done already. And we also know that Ethiopia has natural resources, the raw materials that can serve as input for the industries. Uh, we have it here in, uh, in Romia, particularly in areas we are uh, trying to establish get a special economic zone. So uh, one of the reasons we establish, given the, in, the natural endowment we have, is we need to transform the existing uh, 
uh, infrastructures around the, and the livelihood, people's livelihood should also change. So, as I said, you need to establish a special economic zone, provided that you have a comparative advantage already. That is the reason now uh, we are uh, uh, establishing and uh, we are going to expand the special, not, this is not the only special economic zone in Ethiopia. The others are going to follow suit. As you know, uh, Ethiopia is working uh, uh, to shift at its uh, economy from agricultural led to industry. What is the contribution of uh, expanding such uh, economic zone in realizing this? So far, our uh, industries are mostly labor intensive. Because of these special economic zones, having the special policies in place, we are going to transfer these labor-intensive uh, uh, industries to skill-intensive industries, knowledge-intensive industries, technology-intensive industries. That's why uh, we are confident that uh, the, the establishment of special economic zones will move uh, Ethiopian economy to the next higher level through skill development, knowledge spillover, technology transfer. And the other uh, very important thing is, once special economic services are established, they create domestic entrepreneurs. That's the best quality of special economic zones. Domestic entrepreneurs means you are going to link those zones, those special zones to the national economy, the supply chain. So that, that it is through this that special economic zones transform the national economy of a country. The total construction of the zone will be completed in 40 years' time. Why does it take this much time? Again, I will take you to the uh, uh, international practices. If you have uh, visited uh, Shenzhen economic zone, special economic zone in China, Shenzhen was uh, a rural area 40 years ago, around 1978, uh, 1980. So uh, people were fleeing Shenzhen to Hong Kong because of the economic hardships. Then what they did is they established this special economic zone. Then they attracted the Hong Kongan investors from Hong Kong. Now, uh, after 40 years, Shenzhen is exemplary and a model special economic zone in the world today. But it took them 40 years already. So in our uh, planning of GEDA special economic zone also, we took that experience as an input and we also know that special economic zones are very capital intensive. Capital intensive. So uh, you have to start small and expand it. Start small, learn from the experience. Lesson learned has to be documented. If you get successful, you expand it. That is the way ex special economic zones grow. Today, Shenzhen, it was started very small and coastal areas of Shenzhen. Today it, it, uh, it covers 200,000 hectares. The whole city is a special economic zone today. 200,000 hectares. Gada is 24,000. It's going to be one tenth of Shenzhen. And uh, it expanded through within the last uh, 40 years. We are uh, using that experience as an input. And we are planning at GEDA, in, we are going to finish it in four phases. Phase, in four phases, we are going to finish the uh, development of GEDA special economy. So, so to sum up, <coughs> the reason why we are taking so long time is that is what the international best practice signifies. Two, it is capital intensive. You need to have a huge capital. Uh, and it requires a very meticulous planning, as I said already. So uh, these are the reasons we, uh, special economic zones, normally take longer time, because you have to expand them 
phase by phase because of the issues I, I mentioned already. The construction of uh, this uh, economic no uh, needs huge uh, investment and the technology, as you have mentioned earlier. Uh, what benefit will it uh, uh, bring to the nation in terms of job creation, generating foreign currency and the technological transfer? Again, uh, when you plan to establish special economic zones, you have to uh, go through a detailed financial analysis and economic analysis as well. So once you have a robust uh, understanding of the economic and the financial analysis, then only you, you go for uh, special economic zones. So in our case, uh, our economy as, as a nation, as a country, uh, needs some, uh, some inducement. So we need to transform our economy. You can, we cannot stay uh, having the, uh, the already uh, existing agrarian uh, uh, industries. Uh, and uh, we, the whole world is changing now. So we have to compete with uh, the other countries in the region and uh, in, uh, at, on the global stage as well. So uh, after uh, these types of uh, plannings, and considering that special economic zones incur, incur uh, <clears throat> very uh, huge investment, so uh, we try to calculate the, the returns. What is the country getting in return? For example, uh, if you are asking me about the job creation, our planning document shows over the uh, next 40 years, we are going to generate about uh, four, uh, 7 million jobs. And uh, the export growth is uh, significant. The foreign exchange earnings are going to be significant. Uh, so uh, in general, uh, you go for a special economic zone after having a very robust planning in place in terms of financial uh, analysis, in terms of economic analysis, uh, and in terms of others uh, also. So we did that one. We did it very well. So uh, over the next 40 years, uh, we are going to build uh, Shenzhen of Ethiopia in Geda Special Economic Zone. Domestic and international investors, developers, and uh, enterprises are expected to join uh, the zone. How ready is the zone to accommodate uh, these uh, investors? As I said earlier, we have already acquired uh, around uh, 460 hectares of land. This is huge, by the way. Uh, uh, if you add uh, Hawasa Industrial Park, uh, Bole, uh, Lemmy Phase 1 and Phase 2, I think they are together, all together, they don't... Uh, uh, account for more than uh, 500 hectares of land. So we have already acquired 460 hectares. We are uh, going to acquire additional 600 hectares of land. So the land size is going to be over 1,000. This is huge. So the regional government, the national regional government is paying land compensations. So we need to the, get something in return. Uh, for that, we have already uh, signed an agreement. Private limited company joint development and joint investment agreement with the China's uh, CCECC, China Civil Engineering Construction Corporation. We have been in negotiations with them for over a year. And we were also waiting for the publication of uh, the enactment of Special Economic Zone Proclamation at the federal level. Luckily, that has been, uh, uh, that, uh, the proclamation has been pub uh, enacted, promulgated. Now we are waiting for the uh, SES regulations and uh, SES uh, directives. And uh, these ones are uh, drafted by Special Economic, uh, Special European Investment Commission. And uh, the information I have is they are uh, working on it. It's underway. As I said, given the huge investment we have incurred already, we need to bring investors to the site. 100 hectares of land is already, uh, the agreement has been signed, and many of investors are, a pool of investors are sending their applications. 
we are examining them. Uh, and as I said, we need to do this one very carefully. Um, so uh, in maybe in, uh, in two, uh, three months, you will have uh, investors joining uh, uh, the GEDA Special Economic Zone. What do you advise Ethiopia to succeed at its uh, industrialization ambition? This is a very good question because, uh, again, uh, I'm going to take you uh, uh, to the uh, global practice, the glo global experience. Uh, countries like Singapore, South Korea, China even. Uh, they brought about, uh, uh, they totally changed their working culture first. Uh, we need to do that in Ethiopia. We have to improve our working culture. We have to uh, change our attitude towards uh, uh, our attitude to, normally we, we select uh, works, is it? So uh, there they do everything because they, they need to build their own country. Uh, and the other thing we need to do in Ethiopia is uh, Ethiopia has to become uh, a, metro, uh, a meritocracy. Meritocracy means competency is very important. So countries that, has follow, that have followed a meritocracy have succeeded uh, already. So we have to learn from them. The other one is, you know, uh, those countries that developed uh, have uh, accountability in place. People should be accountable. People should be responsible and they should be accountable as well. So uh, if we put uh, these uh, things and uh, if we change the mindset in Ethiopia, I think uh, the country will... Uh, we'll see uh, a very uh, a different scenario uh, in uh, five to ten years. Uh, so uh, I think all stakeholders in Ethiopia uh, should work toward this uh, bringing a new mindset, a new uh, scenario in Ethiopia. We have because we have only this country and this country has to develop and that is not a question, that is not an option. We have to work hard, and, uh, uh, and it's possible also. Uh, if you take uh, many countries in the world, they have worked through hard work. There is no shortcut. So uh, that is what I, I, I wholeheartedly, uh, sincerely uh, advise uh, all stakeholders. Finally, if you have any uh, concluding remark, you are welcome. I have been to uh, some countries around the world and uh, I came to know that leadership matters. Leadership matters. So if you take the case of uh, President Park of South Korea, the founding fathers of Singapore, the <clears throat> Deng Xiaoping president of China, 1978, uh, they led by example. They critically taught to change their country. They moved all around and uh, they gained experience. Then they brought this economic miracle to their respective countries. So we need to know that leadership matters the most first. And the other thing is uh, always when, when we do, because uh, uh, as a role model, uh, we need to uh, walk our talks as well. And one best example in Ethiopia is, you know why Ethiopian Airlines has su succeeded so far? So, and, and we know that even not, not just us, the, the whole world saw that African, uh, Ethiopian Airlines is the best and it is performing well um, in Africa, one of the best in Africa. I always ask myself, why is this success not being replicated in other sectors of the economy? And we know it, we can do it, because Ethiopian Airlines is with us. We, we see it and uh, we have to ask ourselves,
Dr. Lema Mossa, uh, Manager of Design, Supervision and Contract Administration at GADA uh, Special Economic Zone, thank you for your time and deep insight on our program. Thank you as well. Dear viewers, that brings us to the end of our today's program. See you next time with another program. Till then, bye-bye.